In this video, I'm going to talk about the coefficient of determination, which is r squared, and we use r squared to measure the fit of a regression line. So the formula for r squared is the sum of squares uh, due to the regression divided by the sum of squares total. And recall the sum of squares regression, that's telling us something about the variability of our response variable y that's explained by our regression. And sum of squares total is telling us something about the total variability of our data. So the interpretation of r squared, what is r squared representing? r squared represents the proportion of the total variability, so the portion of the total variability in the response variable or the response data y1 through yn, right? So the portion of the total, right, because total is in the denominator, so the portion of the total that is explained by the regression or the model, right? So that's explained by the regression, right? So we can see that intuitively this makes sense, that r squared is telling us something about the proportion of the total variability in our response data that's explained by our regression, okay? Okay, and we know that SS total can be partitioned, right? SS total equals SS regression plus SS residual, right? So that's the partitioning of our sum of squares, okay? And uh, if you were to use some algebra, you could figure out that r squared, we could also write this as 1 minus ss residual divided by ss total, okay? These are exactly the same formula. So you might see r squared written either way, all right? Uh, it's important to know what the limits of r squared are. So if we look at r squared, let's think about what's the smallest number r squared could possibly be. We know that sum of squares, if you sum squared numbers, the smallest number you can possibly get is zero, right? So zero is the smallest number you can possibly get. So for SS regression, the small, if you're looking at up here at this uh, equation for R squared, the smallest R squared could ever be is zero. And that would happen when SS regression equals zero, right? All right, and so R squared must be greater than or equal to zero, okay? So let's think about when it's equal to zero. What does that mean? If, if the regression, the variability that's explained by the regression is zero, that means that basically the, the uh, regression didn't. It didn't explain the variability, right? The model was a bad model, right? Or the slope term, it also it equaled zero, right? So this is a, a poor fit. Okay, what about the upper limit for r squared? What, what's the max r squared can be? Well, we know that ss total, ss total, since it is the sum of two positive numbers, it must be greater than, so the denominator here, the total variability, must be greater than or at most equal to ss regression. Okay, so if you're always dividing by a larger number or um, or at most equal to that number. So if SS total equals SS regression, then at, then at most R squared could be equals to one. Okay, so R squared is usually going to be a fraction, right? But it can be equal to one when SS uh, regression equals SS total. Okay, and when is SS regression going to equal SS total? if you have a perfect fit, right? So when the model uh, fits the data 
um, perfectly. Perfectly. Okay, and so if the model is fitting the data perfectly, then we know that SS residual, so the residuals, the sum of squares of the residuals is also going to be equal to zero, right? So if you're looking down here at this formula, uh, basically this zero is out and you're left with one. Okay, so in general, we want R squared, if we want a good fit, we want R squared to be close to one. Now, getting a perfect fit, you know, that's that's probably not going to happen if you have random variability around uh, your um, outcome data or your response data. So, you know, but you do want your your the model to fit the data well. So you want the sum of squares regression um, to be a large proportion of the total variability. So then the next question uh, people always ask is, well, how large of an R squared is good enough? Do I, if I get an R squared of 0.8, should I be happy? Is that a good fit model? Or is that a bad fit model? Right? And my answer is very unsatisfying. My answer is it depends. Right? So what's an acceptable value of R squared? It depends. So for example, a chemist who's doing some sort of uh, calibration of some sort of highly precise equipment, they might want an R squared value greater than or equal to 0.99. They'll only be happy with their calibration if they have uh, R squared very, very high. Okay. Um, on the other hand, if you're a behavioral scientist studying something like human behavior, and it can be really difficult to find significant uh, relationships between, um, you know, X and Y, and when you're studying something like human behavior. So you might be happy when you have a model uh, where you have an R squared greater than or equal to, say, 0.7, right? 70% of the variability is explained by the model. Right? So it really, it depends on what field you're in as to uh, what cutoff value you may use uh, for R squared. All right, so before you leave this conversation feeling like, okay, I'm ready, I know how to use R squared, it makes sense, uh, I do want to point out that there are some really important limitations of R squared that often lead um, to misinterpretations, okay? So very important limitations I want to discuss next. So limitations of R squared. Right, and so the first limitation, which often leads to misinterpretations of R squared, uh, has to do with model selection. So um, don't use R squared when you're trying to select mo different which model is better. Okay, so let me go ahead and write that down. Should not be tempted by uh, sh the temptation to use. So should not be used to compare models, different models, okay? So for example, you know, we have our simple linear regression model, and suppose, you know, we're interested in maybe thinking, well, should there be a quadratic term, okay? Should I add another term for the, for, you know, possible quadratic term? So another beta 2, and this time I have my same x, x values, but they're squared. And I'm trying to decide which model should I use. The temptation is, well, whichever one has a larger r squared, it fits better. So let's go ahead and use the um, model with the larger r squared. That's the temptation, right? But uh, r squared, the reason why you don't, don't want to be tempted by this is that R squared can be made artificially high. So it's artificially high by overfitting, right? And overfitting is when you basically have too many model parameters, right? And overfitting is uh, always a temptation um, you know, to get the best fit model, but 
it's it's not necessarily the best model that you should be using if you're trying to make predictions or um, interpretations based off that model. Okay, so R squared can be made artificially high by overfitting. And the reason for that is because when you have more model terms, that's going to yield SS uh, residual decreasing. Okay, so just by the fact that you're having more model terms, you're going to have a smaller SS residual, but that really has nothing to do with um, your model actually being a better fit. All right, so then the next limitation that I want to discuss has to do with the slope of your model. So R squared can appear artificially high if the slope is large. So you may think that uh, you have a really well fit model when in reality what you have is, is just a really large uh, slope. All right, and I'm going to talk through an example of what this means um, you know, in, in Excel. I'm going to show you an example of that. Okay, And then lastly, the last uh, limitation I'm going to talk about and of course there are more limitations of R squared, but these three I think are the most important that I want to talk about right now, is that R squared can appear artificially high if um, there's a large spread of our regressor data uh, X. So if there is a large spread of our regressor x. Okay, and the reason for these, the second two um, limitations, uh, it comes down to, you can kind of think of it, if we, we can show that the expected value of SS uh, regression is the uh, model variability plus beta one squared SXX. All right, and so basically because the expected value of the regression depends on the magnitude or you know how large this slope is and the spread of your data, we do see that, you know, because remember R squared equals SS regression divided by SS total, okay? So we do see that a large R squared, and you know, of course you can do some more math and try to think this through a little in more detail, but uh, the basic point that I want to point out is just that, um, you know, because this expected value of the regression, the sum of squares regression depends on these uh, two parameters, uh, we do see that, you know, with large, when these parameters are large, uh, we have artificially high R squared values that really have nothing to do with the actual fit of the data. Okay, and I'm going to show an example of this and try to clear it up uh, in Excel. And that's going to be in the next video uh, where I'm going to show some examples of all these limitations and kind of talk through a little more about the interpretation and intuition behind R squared.